Good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Welcome once again to the Abuja Cardiovascular Symposium. We are very happy to have you. My name is Dr. Ene Keshi, consultant family physician. So we're introducing a new segment this year, um, which is the first Dr. L. M. Iseko Memorial Lecture. Okay, so um, the Dr. L. M. Iseko Memorial Lecture is going to be done in honor of Dr. Lee Moses Iseko, the founder of the Lini Hospital Group. And we want to just do a brief um, introduction to this lecture. Dr. Lee Moses Iseko was born on the 10th of October, 1951 in Otupo, in Benue State, uh, as the first of two boys of his mother. He completed his secondary school at the famous Bristol Secondary School in Boko, Benue State, where he obtained his O-level um, I proceeded to the Federal School of Arts and Sciences in Lagos, where he obtained his A-level certificate. Um, he prided himself very much in being a member of the Bristol Alumni Association, um, where a lot of prominent Benue State Nigerians have um, emerged from. He got admitted into the prestigious College of Medicine of the University of Benin and graduated with a bachelor's degree in medicine and surgery in 1978. He completed his housemanship at ABU Zar um, Teaching Hospital Kaduna in 1979, and the following year went into the direct service short course, where he was commissioned into the Nigerian Army um, at the rank of and rose to the rank of a captain. His last posting was to the Nigerian Med Military School Zaria, where he worked as the regimental medical officer. Um, he voluntarily retired from the armed forces in 1981 and started the limit the hospital group thereafter. Um, these are some of his pictures. He established the Limit Hospital on the 9th of February 1982 at number 18 Benin Street, Sabongeri Zara, in a very small um, flat, I think. And afterwards, the, the hospital grew slowly and moved to um, the number 21D Aminu Road, Sabongeri Zaria which is now, has now been um, um, converted to a government hospital um, serving the Sabungari district. He, in 2002, established the Abuja branch of the Limi Hospital, and this hospital has grown to have several other branches in the Limi Children's Hospital, the Cardio Care Multi-Specialty Hospital that is hosting this conference today. And... Um, um, the multi specialty hospital with a dedicated children's hospital, cardiac uh, multi specialty hospital, branches in Wuse 2 and area 11 Garaki, respectively, with a total bed capacity of over 100 beds. This is um, the, the Limi Hospital in Sabon Gariz area um, where we started um, this uh, a group of the staff around that time. Um, and after the, the hospital has grown, and we thank God for his help. His passion for excellence in healthcare spurred him to venture into the new field of med medical ultrasonography and he obtained a diploma from the Markel Medical Ultrasound Institute in Abaddon under the tutelage of Dr. Tony Marino. He also proceeded for more training at the Gulf Coast Ultrasound Institute in Florida, United States of America in 2006. He was a pioneer of ultrasound excellence and training in Zaria and in Abuja and I was a member of the American Institute of Ultrasound in Medicine and faithfully attended all their annual conventions in the United States. He was also a fellow of the Afro-Asian Institute of Ultrasound and director of the Afro-Asian Institute of Me Me uh, Medical Sciences, chaired by Professor Syed Amir Gilani of the Faculty of Allied Health Services, University of Lahore, pa Pakistan. He was married to Dr. J.B. Ari Seko and was blessed with five children. Um, these, are, um, these are pictures. And this is his picture. She was called to glory on the 9th of December, 2009. This lecture is dedicated to an entrepreneur, leader, father, and founder of the Limi Hospital Groups. And we want to give tributes to an honor to a life well lived. Thank you very much. So Dr. Iseko will be coming now to introduce the speaker of the inaugural first Dr. Lee Moses Iseko Memorial Lecture. Please put your hands together as we welcome him.
Thank you very much, Dr. Keshi. Um, Professor S. S. Dambauchi. So I think we should. I think it's a question whether you stand up. I think I can't remember. <laughs> this is tough. Um, to everyone here present, Professor Solomon Dambauchi, uh, Solomon Sule Dambauchi, MBBS Fellow, West African College of Physicians, member American College of Physicians. Uh, fellow American College of Cardiology, fellow Nigerian Cardiac Society, FIMC, Department of Internal Medicine, Josh University, Josh University Teaching Hospital. His current position is Professor of Medicine since 2004, consultant physician cardiologist in Department of Medicine, University of Josh, and the Josh University Teaching Hospital, Josh. Um, he's um, 69, 64 years and county, um, born in 1959. A uh, two lab I tribe from Gombe. Um, his school degree certificate was obtained in 1972. Um, West Africa, WASC 1977, IGMB 1978, some people were not born. MBBS 1983, some people were still not born. FWSP 1992, some people were still not born. <laughs> MACP 2009, I think most people were born by now. FACC 2013, FNCS 2018, FIMC 2019. Um, attended um, Baole Tula Primary School in 1966-1972. GSS Kaltungo till 1977. SBS and ABU to 1978. And ABU um, 78-83. West African College of Physicians in Adelaide University Teaching Hospital, um, which concluded in 1992. And then the Commonwealth Medical Fellowship at the Freeman Hospital, Newcastle. Upon time in uh, 19, which it completed in 1997. I'm correct, Newcastle upon time, yeah. Over 70 publications in national and international journals. He has presented over 40 papers in national and international conferences. A reviewer to national and international journals. He has authored and contributed to two books. Um, he has worked in several hospitals over the years. I was a physician to the late Emir Alzazao, um, Shehu Idris, and his working experience spanned. Um, ABUTH, ABU, uh, Amadou Bello University, and became a professor in October 2004 with administrative experience at several levels from exam officer, head of department, deputy director to superintendent of the permanent site on, at, at ABUTH Zaria. Um, several society contributions in the Nigerian Hypertension Society, where he was secretary general in 2006 to, to 2010. He was vice president of the Nigerian Cadre Society 2006 to 2010. And president of NCS, Nigerian Cadre Society, from 2010 to 2014. He was the chairman of the West African College of Physicians Internal Medicine Nigerian Chapter and chairman West African College of Physicians at college level. Member of many learned societies, um, NMA, MDCAN, FACC, as, as, and PASCA, and so on and so forth, with honored prizes, best graduating students, best prizes, seven prizes. Um, in 1977, Glasgow Prize for Best Pediatric Student in 1983, Tula Achievers Honor in 2012. He has supervised many people, including a professor, Professor S. B. Garko, uh, was supervised by him at progressive level, Dr. M. E. Al Hassan, uh, who was also my teacher and, and pushed me into cardiology, Professor M. S. Issa, Professor Oyati, Professor Tale, Dr. Azu, several consultants and professors had their postgraduate supervision by him. A lot of postgraduate mentoring and supervision of several others um, in the faculty and postgraduate mentoring of many others, including Dr. Okopi, who has just qualified recently as a fellow of the West African College of Physicians and is here. Several over 40 conference, national and international conferences, 38 conference paper, paper presentations, over 70 peer review journals, with greater than 90% in cardiology. Ah, hey, can we really? You need to greet him especially when you see him. Served in community service in, in academic and non-academic communities. He has done a lot of community service in Gombe, a state where he has been a visiting consultant cardiologist, a member of the Curriculum Developing Committee for the College of Medical Science of Sciences. So that he doesn't stand too long, I will skip. He's married to one wife, and has three male children. He has several references, including the revered Professor Alassan Yakubu, and um, he has a vision with 
several other things and we want to really appreciate him. This year, can we give a standing ovation to welcome this year's first LMS, Dr. LMS Second Memorial Lecturer, Dr. Uh, Professor S.S. Dambauchi. Please, sir. Podium, sir. Please keep it, keep it, keep it going, keep it going. Teacher of teachers. You are welcome, sir. Um, good afternoon. <laughs> I'm humbled. <laughs> and I still feel humbled. Um, I want to say I am very, very grateful to God. It's God's favor. All that you've read is not me. It's God's favor on me. And I really appreciate it. And I also want to say I appreciate those who have interacted with in one way or the other, whether they are undergraduate levels or they are postgraduate level, or whether I'm assessing their chair or professorial um, CV, because I've done several. Um, I'm supposed to give a keynote ad address. Is my slice on? All right. Thank you. Now, I've been associated with the uh, Limi hospitals for almost 30 something years. Um, when they were in Zaria, as a senior registrar, I used to go there to work extra so that I can earn slight more money. <laughs> And in those days, as a registrar or as a resident doctor, if you have a car, they are looking at you and say, ah, this guy is coming from where? So that time, resident doctors were poor people. They don't usually drive cars. So if you are driving a car, you are a very rich person. Right. So that was the first time I met the uh, late Dr. Lee. Moses Seko. And I know him for being very, very hard working. He is focused and he's an achiever. Because as you can see in his CV or tribute, the hospital he built in Aminu Road in Zaria actually was converted to a general hospital to serve the whole of Sabungari Zaria. So he was very, very, um, let me say, aggressive in doing his medicine. Very, very aggressive, you know. So we want to thank God for his life and want to thank God for what he has left behind. So I'm not supposed to have some disclosures. I'm not. It's a key note address, so no disclosure. All right. But I want to thank Cardio Care. Because this is a forum for doctors, for healthcare uh, providers to learn, to relearn, and to unlearn. Because now, if I so I said it this way: if I if I go the other way, who is an illiterate in cardiology? The person that has refused to learn refuse to relearn and refuse to unlearn and carrying what he had in MBBS and going about it. So cardio care is saying, no, we must stop it. We must learn, relearn, and unlearn. And they are taking cardiac disease care. To the next level. Don't don't tell me, don't say this next level. Oh. Before, before, we were told that we were going to the next level. So please, <laughs> those who understood the joke will get the joke. So this next level is a real beneficial next level. 
Aha. So I hope you understood that. All right? And I'm not sure there's any other group up north that is doing something like this. I think they are the first. And we are told he's the seventh. And, and, and they are working stronger and stronger and stronger. Okay. So, I have, I'm not sure I have that much experience in cardiology. That is something, yes, it's limited. Yes, it's limited. But I have some tips and tricks that I've learned over the time. Okay? Which um, we are supposed to be using. Now, some of these tips can happen at the best side. Yeah? Trying to even examine the precordium, you have, you need some tips, and you also need some tricks. You are not feeling the cardiac appears. They say you should turn the patient to the left side. All right, so you get some tips. All right, and then a clinician actually is supposed to work as a detective. Remember, we said cardiac cardiac failure is a syndrome, so we are looking for. Is, real, is this patient really in cardiac failure? So you are acting as a detective and you have to use your skills to gather vital information. So we are talking about major criteria, we are talking about minor criteria. If you don't use your skills very well, you might not be able to make a diagnosis. And that will help you to make a diagnosis. And it comes from you have good medical history, physical examination, and then, as I said much earlier, investigations are meant for you to confirm. You are not going there to see something new, okay? If this patient has a collapsing pulse, I know that most likely this patient has a aortic regurgitation. So I look for other signs of aortic regurgitation. These are the tips. If the patient has a pulses, pavus, a tardus. Ah. Pulses, pavus, a tardus. What does that mean? Plateau pulse. What does that mean? I know that most likely this patient has aortic stenosis. So you see, so these are some things that we learn over time. And then we keep using it. So we translate clinical evidence into practice. Making a diagnosis of heart failure. So we have to translate what evidence we've gotten to arrive at a diagnosis and to be able to actually treat these patients much better. So this is a slide that I used to put up when I'm teaching medical students, especially on physical examination. Okay, the 400 level, the introductory group that comes in. You cannot take away history. It's there in Hutchinson. History will give you 70, 75% of a diagnosis. And in fact, if it's a neurological problem, 90% you made a diagnosis even without touching the patient. All right. And then physical examination asks only 15 to 20% to complete the diagnosis. You come in with a differential diagnosis, and then investigations can imagine that 5 to 10%, confirming what you are thinking. All right. And you confirm your diagnosis. Or what happens in Nigeria now? Somebody stops you on the street or on the corridor and says, Hey, they did an x ray for me. They say, I have a big heart, a large heart. Where you are coming from? I don't. I don't know where you are coming from. All right. Oh, they meet you on the corridor. Hey, doctor. They say I have a small typhoid or small malaria. Go back to the person that did the test for you. I don't know. All right. So, part of the tricks and the tips in clinical medicine, in cardiology practice, is very good communication. Very good communication. 
and uh, Dr. Iseko talked about it. We must talk to our patients clearly. And a good communication involves when you are communicating, you are concentrating. The patient sees how, you know, clear you are. You must have that knowledge to be able to communicate properly. You must show kindness and you must show humor. Recently, one patient said, eh, eh, Prof, do they teach you people to smile? So you're not smiling at the patient. You act as if you are a masquerade. The patient will not be comfortable. All right? So I, I said, let me play this thing. In 2016, the funeral of physical examination was done in the U.S. Aha. Uh -huh. What were they saying? They are saying we have so much technology. You don't need to touch this patient. Is that so? We still need to touch this patient. Okay, so we still need to touch this patient. How? Inspection, palpation, percussion, auscultation, and we arrive at an assessment. Oh, I think because of this, 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 this patient has consolidation. Oh, because of this, 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 I think this patient has ascites. So you arrive at diagnosis or assessment when you do this. And then the other thing is the point of care now that is also invading our practice. I can carry my echo machine in my palm and then scan the patient immediately by the bedside. Okay, so bedside, you can you can also do that. So what do we use? Your eyes, very very important. Your nose, very very important. Your ears, yes. When I pass patients sitting like this, when they say, ah, "Is this Professor Dambochi?" So I turn and say, "Yeah yeah yeah, he's one, he's one." So when they say, "How did you hear?" So this ear has been tuned so much. Listening to art sounds for 30 years, 30 something years. It's, this, this year has been so tuned that I can pick the slightest noise that comes around me. All right? So, how do we relate with our patients? Very, very important. I know that Lady Seko was very, very, patients were flocking there. Even though there was a teaching hospital. Yes, patients were flocking there because of the good practice, I mean, good reception and practice they were, they, they were receiving. So, how do we relate with our patients? Very, very important. Now, anything you talk about, as far as cardiovascular problems are concerned, anything you co talk about, the final common pathway is what? Heart failure. The final common pathway, whatever you are talking about, final common pathway is heart failure. So it behoves the doctor now to say, is it because of arrhythmias? Is it because of myocardial dysfunction? Myocardial dysfunction can be from hypertension, can be from myocardial infarction, or is it because of pericardial disease, or is it because of valvular disease? So the final common pathway is heart failure. And we should be able to, you know. So, you as a doctor, you are interrogating the cardiovascular system. All right, so and you should use the basic principles of clinical examination. All right, and then investigation, as I said much earlier, are meant to confirm. And then you manage the patient properly because patient management is patient centered. It's not you, the doctor. You are not God. It must must be something that will benefit the patient not benefiting the doctor. So, because there's widespread of technology, you know, people are trying to move. And we're talking of AI, all now, ah, probably doctors who are going to be put to, put off, of the, off jobs because of AI. But I don't think, it, for now, AI will act as a human being. It's yet to reach that level, all right? So, our clinical approach is very, very important in making diagnosis, all right? 
and to be able to arrive at what these patients should have. These days, we have uh, data from the lab, I mean, cat lab, data from uh, ECHO, data from electrophysiology, but still, the patient, still, is the patient. All right, we said heart failure is a clinical diagnosis. Yes, the cat lab will help you. Okay, so we need to meticulously take a good history, do a proper examination, all right? And we cannot move away from these aspects. It's not possible. Right, so guidelines, guidelines, guidelines. But guidelines are where we get those tips and tricks. And guidelines are awash everywhere, guidelines. In fact, I'm sure you even have to remove a, a, a nail. I mean, a, a, a nail, yeah? A toenail will even have a guideline. <laughs> All right? So this is supposed to show you how many countries in Africa that have guidelines on treatment of hypertension. But, 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 I have a problem here. The first guideline for hypertension in Nigeria was a committee member. <laughs> Should I surprise you? It was like copy and paste. It was a copy and paste. Have we gathered that those experience? Because those people that are doing JNC1 up to JNC8, it's all experience over time. The NC people, it's experience over time. But what do we do? We copy and paste. We copy and paste. And most times, we're confused. We don't know. What will I do? Which guideline will I follow? How they say this, this, this. Okay, uh, those who are older, the controversy was, can you use uh, beta blockers as first line in, in, in the blocks? They generated to, can we use AC inhibitors as beta blockers in, in the blocks? So guidelines might be confusing, all right? So we are being flooded with guidelines. But our own work is to bring our clinical experience and the guidelines, pick the ones that we want, amalgamate them together, and go do a good practice, all right? So. When I was the uh, president of Nigerian Cardiac Society, I said, hey guys, can we have a cardiovascular disease map of Nigeria? And one of my suggestions was that we should have a NEC or ESCO symposium in every conference where we take topics like when we had it in Portacot, I gave a, a talk on peripatum cardiac failure. So you have to look at all the publications that have been done. Somebody did it on rheumatic valvular heart disease. What was it meant for? It's for us to now start compiling our experience so that now we can come in with a guideline. Well, those who took over subsequently, I don't know what happened, but I'm not saying they're doing very well. So, what am I trying to say? We have to learn, relearn, and unlearn if we want to be literate in our practice. If we want to be literate in our practice, and that is what cardio care is doing trying to make us not to be illiterate in our field. All right? And we shall amalgamate our traditional, you know, my handling of patients with the high tech. You have what, 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 what we were told. Late Moses Seko pioneered ultrasound in Zaria. Okay? People are going from ABU to go to his clinic to have ultrasound done. 
All right. So we have to amalgamate our traditional physical and then with the high tech and our patients will benefit much, much further. All right. They will get more uh, uh, management that will be of benefit. All right. So cardio, uh, cardio care, we want to thank you very much. I think you've done very well. And we pray that you work stronger. And we pray that the sky will not be your limit. It's usually one's mind that is your limit, actually. There's nothing, there's no concern about sky. Thank you very much. <laughs>